Hello from San Diego, California. David Baldwin here. I am excited to be led by the Holy Spirit to be able to partner with you to discover your God-given purpose. What lights you up? What are you willing to suffer for? What problem are you here to solve? What is your assignment? Through interviews, tools, and resources, we're gonna help you be equipped to find your God-given purpose on this podcast, On Purpose, for his purpose. Let's go. Good day to you all. I am taking a step of faith today as I ask God, what do you want me to share on your podcast, On Purpose for His Purpose? And what came to my heart and mind is the idea of how to pray. Now, the concept of how to pray, that idea is an interesting one because there's many ways to pray. The idea here is what is in your heart, because what's in your heart is going to be reflected with the words that you speak. And so when you think about what actually comes out of you, the behaviors, that is an indication of really what's going on in your heart. And so when Randy and I work with executives and we uh, talk about emotional intelligence, EQ, if you will, that's the phrase, and we say, well, how are you doing today? And someone says, I'm good, I'm okay, I'm fine. Those are general words where we know there's a whole lot more under the surface. Being able to express more of what is in your heart is a way for you to connect in a deeper relationship with the Trinity, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to share with you things that I've learned, and hopefully that this inspires and encourages you to think about how you can draw closer in your relationship with Jesus the Father, and the Holy Spirit, all right, the Trinity. So I'm going to share with you a daily prayer that I have customized and continues to ebb and flow and change over the last almost 25 years. And it's uh, something that helps me. It's not to be just memorized and said in a rote legalistic manner, because that's not connecting a relationship. That's just going through a manual task. But there's something about the words that... The, the, the heart condition and the posture of my heart of when I'm saying and when I'm thinking and when I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to bring new words in the moment as I'm praying in relationship. So I do hope that this daily prayer inspires you. I do hope that as you think about how you pray, how you connect, how you relate in your own unique way, that is an opportunity for you to respond with, what else is there? How can I connect in a deeper, deeper relationship? When I pray with my wife, I I ask God, help me to fall more in love with her today than I did when I first married her, the day of our wedding, if you will, and, and then how things have transformed over the years. Help me to fall more in love with her. So for you to fall more in love with Jesus, that's the concept here today. So to start, this is what I've learned is you have to come in a place of readiness, a posture of readiness. And what that looks like is just starting with some sort of worship song. So I'm going to, as an example, share my screen. This is on YouTube. You can find it anywhere and everywhere. But I just went to a Brandon Lake concert, and this was a song called Too Good to Not Believe. And as this song is playing, I am surrendering my, my heart I'm letting thoughts evaporate. I'm preparing myself to commune and maybe I'll just be silent. So as I'm praying and preparing my heart and my heart is basically warming up, if you will, I'm awakening, I'm taking charge, I'm commanding my my body, my physical body to, to worship and to honor and to praise. So this is the the opportunity that you have in a preparation before you begin to commune and talk. So I'm going to pause this for now. And I'm come back and just say, as you are preparing yourself, similar to when you would go to a physical workout to work out your body, this is an opportunity for you to prepare when you are going to be in conversation, in relationship with Jesus. Now, you're always in relationship with Jesus 24-7, yes. But for you to go to a deeper level, to be able to prepare yourself, to go for more, this is what this is intended to do. So the prayer that I'm going to share with you is a daily prayer, meaning you can say it daily. 
Now, how and the actual words you use daily is really up to you and the Holy Spirit and where you're going to be surrendering and asking and committing and praising and, and all of that. But this is a prayer um, to help you have some sort of structure. Again, I do not want this to be uh, a prayer you just memorize and legalistically state because that's the, the wrong intent. That is in your head and not out of your heart. But the words that I have learned over the years, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it. It's on my phone. So it's on my phone and it allows me to, to access it. And I listen to it. I'm encouraged by it. And so what I do is I say these words. My dear Lord Jesus, I come to you now to be restored in you, renewed in you, to receive your life and your love and all the grace and mercy I so desperately need this day. And then I honor him. I honor you as my Lord and I surrender every aspect and dimension of my life totally and completely to you. I give you my spirit, soul, and body, my heart, mind, and will. I cover myself with your blood, my spirit, soul, and body, my heart, mind, and will. I ask your Holy Spirit to restore me in you, renew me in you, and lead this time of prayer. I may be silent for a while, <sighs> breathe in and out just to be able to be connected and be prepared and ready for whatever is going to happen next. And then I'll say, in all that I now pray, and being a, a dad with my wife and kids, I'll say, I include my wife and say their name. My wife is Lisa. My, my sons, Luke and Will, acting as their head, as the father of the household or the family, I cover them with your blood, their spirit, soul, and body, their heart, mind, and will. I don't know who you have in connection and relationship with you. It could be anybody. It could be a friend. It could be a family member. But that's where you're now, if it's under your domain that God has given you, you to steward and to cultivate and to create, this is your opportunity. I ask your spirit to restore them in you and to include them in all that I now pray. In all that I now pray, I stand in total agreement. So I'm making a literal agreement with your spirit. And with all those praying for me by the spirit of God and by the spirit of God alone. When we make agreements, these are real agreements. You may have a, a, a financial credit card holder agreement, right? In your, in your <laughs> a credit card here, right? That cardholder agreement can change. And sometimes we get things in the mail and we, the agreement changes. But we sometimes don't even pay attention to them. But these agreements matter. And God knows every single detail of an agreement, especially when we make agreements to him. And obviously, if we make agreements not to him, but to the evil one. And those agreements have to be broken. But agreements is a, is a big, powerful word. The word covenant you think about Moses, <laughs> thinking about the word covenant. So agreements. In all that I now pray, I stand in total agreement with your spirit. Because your spirit, if you know Jesus is alive, 100% you are going to heaven and it is alive. And with all those praying for me by the spirit of God and by the spirit of God alone. All right. Then I move into dearest God, Father, holy and victorious Trinity, the three. You alone are worthy of all my worship. That's why you prepare your heart for worship, singing songs, whatever that is for you. My heart's devotion, all my praise, all my trust, and all the glory of my life. I love you. I worship you. I give myself over to you in my heart's search for life. You alone are life, and you have become my life. You created life. You are love. And then I move into, I renounce all other gods that are not you, other spirits and every idol. And I give to you, God, the place in my heart and in my life that you truly deserve. And then I'll renounce specific things that are in my life 
that the Holy Spirit has bring an awareness to that I'm aware of that I have to renounce and, and stop and cancel. And it could be anything. So I, I, for example, I write, I renounce the God of unbelief. The, I renounce the God of being offended, the offended self. I renounce the God of writing the world through rage and pride. I am right. I renounce the God of convenience. I renounce the God of false control. I don't have control. Even though sometimes I think I have control or want to control others, which is a whole other demonic thing around witchcraft. But I, I, denou- I renounce that. If there's anything related to anything specific in your life that is a God, even if it's like gluttony, like you overeat, you're like, well, that's just, is that really? Po-? Yeah, that could be. It could be your, your phone. It could be your email. It could be whatever the idol is, you renounce it. And if you don't know what it is, just in silence, ask, what have I made or am I making an idol that is getting in the way of my relationship with you, God? And then you say, I renounce, and then you just call it out. Now, once you've done that, and this is something that you may add to as as you become more aware of these idols that you have committed to, and an idol is anything that is not of God, (laughs) the real God, you say, this is all about you, God, and not about me. You are the hero of this story, and I belong to you. And then I move into, this is the powerful one, because this is where Jesus modeled it. I ask your forgiveness for my every sin. And if you cannot forgive yourself and others, then there's going to be a block. The relationship, there's going to be, it's going to be like a, kind of like a brick wall with some Swiss cheese in it. (laughs) It's going to not get through completely because you're blocking it. And forgiveness is the key that shatters the brick wall, if you will and opens your heart. So I'll say, I, I forgive me of my sin. And you perhaps know your sin. If you don't, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Spirit of unbelief, um, doubt, gluttony, inappropriate anger, bursts of rage, injustice, rudeness, unkindness, fear, lack of faith, uh, not spending money in a good stewardly way, uh, maybe sexual lust, indecisiveness, disobedience, depression, lack of trust for hope, pride, worrying, being a victim. These are sins when you really examine them, right? And so when you're making them an idol and you agree with that spirit, that sinful spirit, you are saying, I'm sorry, forgive me for making that choice. And you may say, well, I didn't cause that. That's generational sin. It is what it is, and you have to take responsibility because this is a spiritual war where the evil one does not play fair. There is no correct war procedure here. It's, it's all out, all in, and everything goes. And so for you, you, you cover all the sin, and you ask for forgiveness. And when you know something is truly forgiven, it doesn't bother you. It doesn't irritate you. A person that you that has been hurt, that you've been hurt by, you actually want to love on them, as compared to oh, I'm going to avoid them. So there's ways and indications for you to recognize when you've truly forgiven. And there's other resources out there that we can talk about around how to actually let go more of. But forgiveness is huge. So getting rid of the idols and then forgiveness and, this, and then uh, then I say search me, know me. And reveal to me where you are working in my life. And grant to me the grace of your healing, deliverance, and a deep and true repentance. And then I move into Heavenly Father specifically. Thank you for loving me and choosing me before you made the world. He chose you before he made the world. That's hard to fathom in our little minds here. You are my true Father, my Creator redeemer, sustainer, and the true end of all things, including my life. I love you. I trust you. I worship you. I give myself over to you, Father, to be one with you as Jesus is one with you. Then I move into thanking him. Thank you for proving your love for me by sending Jesus, your only son. I receive him and all his life, and all his work, which you ordained for me. Thank you for including me in Christ, 
forgiving me my sins, granting me his righteousness, making me complete in him, in Jesus. Thank you for making me alive with Christ, raising me with him, seating me with him at your right hand, establishing me in his authority, and anointing me with your love and your spirit and your favor. You get it all because of Jesus. I receive it. So say, I receive it. You have the, you have the ability to receive. I receive it all with thanks and gratitude and give it total claim to my life, my spirit, soul, and body, my heart, mind, and will. Because we are a body. <laughs> There's a spirit that comes alive fully when we accept Jesus. And then we have our soul. Our soul is our unique personality, um, the uniqueness of uh, how there's only one of us. So, But then I move into, after the Father, I go into praying specifically to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, thank you for coming to ransom me with your own life. I love you, worship you, trust you. I give myself over to you to be one with you in all things. I receive all the work and triumph of your cross, death, blood, and sacrifice for me, through which my every sin is atoned for. I am ransomed, delivered from the kingdom of darkness and transferred to your kingdom. My sin nature is removed, my heart circumcised unto God, and every claim being made against me is canceled and disarmed because of you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then I move into, with my wife, Lisa, my sons, Luke and Will, I take my place now in your cross and death, dying with you to sin, to my flesh, to this world, to the evil one and his kingdom. And I choose to take up the cross and crucify my flesh with all its fill in the blank, rage, arrogance, sin, deception, uh, violation, unbelief, idolatry, fear, victimhood, worry, laziness, gluttony, pride, lust, physical abuse, lack of trust, and the list can go on depending on what God reveals to you. Those are just a few of the, of the words that can come to mind. I choose to trust that you will allow and provide whatever you need. Purposeful and meaningful work direction and financial long-term freedom and provision. So Lisa and I can give generously to others. So asking so we can give to others. Whatever that is for you, because you've crucified. All right. Then I move into, I put off the old man. The old David Baldwin. I put him off. <laughs> Apply to me, and again, my wife, who I have domain, and my sons, Luke and Will. All the work, all the work and triumph in your cross. Death, blood, and sacrifice. All of the power. I receive it with thanks, and I give it total claim to my spirit, soul, and body, my heart, mind, and will. Jesus. I ask, and this is where I connect in deeper relationship with him. I also receive you as my life. And I receive all the work and triumph in your resurrection, through which you have conquered sin, death, judgment, and the evil one. Death has no power over you. This is where I get to celebrate that I'm not going to die. I'm going to just pass. I mean, that, that's, that's huge, right? That's the big deal. All right, so I say death has no power over you, nor does any foul thing. And I have been raised with you to a new life, to live your life dead to sin and alive to God here, heaven on earth, as it is in heaven. Just the whole concept that I have that and can have that here as I ask and walk that out. It's a process. Now, definitely I'm going to be fully restored in heaven, or my dad is right now. He passed away about five years ago. Looking forward to just hanging out with him. But then I pray and I move forward and I say, Jesus, I also sincerely receive you as my authority 
He has given us me and given us authority, rule, and dominion. My everlasting victory against Satan and his, his kingdom. And my ability to bring your kingdom at all times and in every way. He's given us that authority. I receive all the work and triumph in your ascension through which Satan has been judged and cast down. All authority in the heavens and on this earth has been given to you, Jesus, and you are worthy to receive all glory and honor, power and dominion, now and forever. So you say you say that with your own creative words, your heart, it's, it's just like you, you are committing, you're, 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 you're surrendering, and you're stating the, the truth. And then I say, with my wife, Lisa, Luke, and Will, I take my place now in your authority and in your throne through which I have been raised with you to the right hand of the Father and established in your authority. I give myself to you to reign with you always. I am a king. Yes, I'm not the king of kings, right? But I am a king to reign with Jesus, the king of kings. Apply to me, Lisa, Luke and Will, again stating their specific names, all the work and triumph in your authority and your throne. I receive it, again, with thanks. And I give it total claim to my spirit, soul, and body, my heart, mind, and will. And then I move into, I now bring that authority, the authority, rule, and dominion of the Lord Jesus Christ and the full work of Christ over my life today over Lisa, Luke, and Will, over my home. You get really customized and specific here. Whatever the Holy Spirit's revealing to you, my, my household, um, the, uh, the, the financial debt, the, the whatever the, that you're going through in life, the, the medical challenges, because God never wants us to um, be sick. He didn't cause that, right? It's a whole nother conversation, right? He wants us to be healed, to be fully restored. But he allows things for his purposes. But you pray whatever you want to pray for, and you bring that authority in the name of Jesus Christ. I bring all of his authority over our physical bodies, removing gluttony and temptation, that I have the strength to say no to sugar, stuff that tempts me, that is not good for me, whatever that is, all right? Over all my kingdom and domain. Interesting, right? He is, the, he is the king of kings. It's his kingdom, but it's my, my little kingdom, right, that I have domain over, that he's given me and trusted me with. Then I say, I bring the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and the full work of Christ against every evil power coming against me, Lisa, Luke, and Will, against every foul spirit and every foul power and device. At this point, I'm at war, and I'm bringing the authority that Jesus gave to me, and I'm saying specifically, whatever it is that's attacking me, the spirit of, and it's gone, and believing and standing in that agreement. So I'll say, uh, rebuke the spirit of victimhood, pridefulness, the spirit of selfishness, the spirit of financial debt, financial bondage, feeling forsaken, fleshy self-sabotage, violation, I'm just reading a few that I've written over the over the years, deception, judging others, impatience, punishment, bondage, loneliness, shame, anxiety. I mean, the list can go on and on and on, but ask the Holy Spirit, what is attacking me? What, what have I made an agreement to that I need to break off by the authority that I have in Jesus Christ? And then write that down and then capture that. And then you go to war and you fight it and then it, it, it releases, it's gone. That's a whole other conversation. I'm going to invite someone as a guest to talk about how you go to battle and remove these spirits, these demonic spirits that are attacking us. Maybe we made agreements in our lifetime or it's been generational. And how to actually strategically, tactically cancel them. It's not as complicated as you might think. So that's a whole other conversation. But once you've gone through and in the authority prayed for all these things, whatever it is, I mean, it could be something as stealing, profanity, um, videos that you have watched or whatever it is. I then, and then I say, I cut them off in the name of Jesus. I bind and banish them from me and from my household and kingdom now. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I also bring the full work of Christ between each of us and every person. And I allow only the love of God and only the Spirit of God between us. So I'm purifying, I'm cleansing. And then I move into the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for coming. I love you. I worship you. I trust you. I receive all the work and triumph in Pentecost through which you have come. You have clothed me with power from on high, sealed me in Christ, become my union with the Father and the Son, the Spirit of truth in me, the life of God in me, my counselor, comforter, strength, and guide. Allow me to experience whatever you want to experience. Maybe speaking in tongues is a concept. Um, being able to be, be filled with the baptism in Acts 2.38. So this is an opportunity for you to commune and connect with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's literally a, a person. If you've listened to some of Randy Kay's interviews where people have actually interacted and, and they've had pictures and visuals. So I just want to call that out. So once I've called out what I'm asking for, what I, I'm in need of, what I'm um, asking in partnership and relationship with the Holy Spirit to do with me, for me, to me, um, encourage me, because that's what the Holy Spirit's role is, right? Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to be the comforter, to be the guide, to be the prompter. And I say, I honor you as Lord. And with, again, my wife, Lisa, Luke, and Will, I fully give to you every aspect and dimension of my spirit, soul, and body. I give access to everything, to the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. I open myself up to be filled with you, to walk in step with you in all things. I do this versus what other people will do Will they'll open themselves up to the sad demonic. So I'm opening myself up to the purified, 100% perfect God. Then I say, um, lead us, the family, my family, into all truth. Anoint us for all of our life, walk, and calling, our purpose. And lead us deeper into Jesus today. I receive, again, I receive you with thanks. And I give you total claim to our lives. You have access to everything. Heavenly Father, thank you for granting to us every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. We've been given blessings. I claim the riches in Christ Jesus over my life today and over again my wife and my sons. I bring the blood of Christ once more over each of us, our spirit, soul, and body, over our heart, mind, and will. And then I say, let's bulk up. Let's put on the full armor of God. And I say, armor each of us with your armor as we go into battle. I put on the full armor of God for me, Lisa, Luke, and Will, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, the helmet of salvation. I take up the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, and I choose to be strong. I choose to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of your might to pray at all times in the spirit and stand firm with the full armor of God. It's a choice. But I put that on, literally. <laughs> Jesus. And then I go, thank you for your angels. I summon them in the name of Jesus Christ and instruct them to destroy all that is raised against me and against Lisa, Luke, and Will. To establish your kingdom over us. To guard us day and night. I ask you to send forth your spirit to raise up prayer and intercession for me and my household. Meaning, I'm asking to have the Holy Spirit prompt others to pray for our family. Whatever comes up. I now call forth, this is where I'm starting to close here. I now call forth the kingdom of God throughout the flow and organization of my home, my family my finances, and then I get very specific about whatever I'm looking for, whatever needs I'm having, whatever I'm believing for, and calling that out for, for if there's gluttony, eating habits, um, 
fighting that in our family. There's a generational sin of gluttony. And so canceling gluttony. <laughs> that the, the, the physical body can die and I can have the, the strength to say no. And I have specific things that I am tempted by. Specific sugar things. And I call them out specifically. Sugary coffees, for example. All right. I'm getting very specific because I now know that that temptation will come my way. And when I see it and I keep praying against it, it's going to die. It's not going to be like, drink me, drink me. No, I will not. <laughs> All right. So I say those specific things. And then I close with, in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving all glory and honor and thanks to him. And then if there's more, even more specific prayers that are going on or lingering, I'll even bring those up. But that's basically how I close it. Now, this, this prayer, this, this structure, the skeleton, these things, to these principles, I originally learned, I want to give acknowledgement to uh, John Eldridge. I'm not sure if you heard of that name before, but he's really impacted my life well over 25 years ago and beyond. And so this is where I initially learned it, and I've been adding and adding and adding to it. And it changes and shifts, but it allows me to put myself into a position where I'm able to connect in a clear manner or way. As compared to just saying, God be with me this day, let it be a good day, bless us in Jesus' name, amen. I mean, that, that's not going to be a, a power of strength. I mean, so that, that's the idea is how to align yourself and prepare your heart, mind, and will, everything to be able to go to war. And we've already won. So to be victorious in believing that, because we have the authority if you've accepted Jesus into your heart. So whatever the specific prayer requests, whatever that looks like. And then another thing that I'd like to encourage you to do is uh, write it out. Not that you have to, again, memorize it, but, but populate it, make it around, record yourself um, on audio and just listen to yourself and let it, this is you speaking in your own unique voice to God. So it's, it's very powerful because there's only one of you <laughs> and you're the only one that's going to express yourself the way you do to him. So that's where the relationship can grow deeper. But what I also do is I then reflect back as I'm, we're all going through hard moments because we know we're going to have trials and tribulations. And you may say, well, your heart is not as hard as mine, but I, I there's no way of diminishing anybody's hard because whatever the hard that you're going through, it, it, it can literally take you out. You know, there's people that have gone into like, I'm done. And they're like living with all the worldly materialistic possessions. You think, why would they, they have the family and everything? Well, they've, they've canceled themselves. They've fallen into depression, whatever it is. So a spirit has taken over no matter where they are in the world. So just want to recognize that someone's pain or someone's hard, you, you don't diminish it. It's all hard <laughs> at, at the same time, being able to help get people free. That's the goal. So they can live the abundant life and walk in their purpose. So I'll reflect on the mo most significant things that have happened in my life. December 9th, 1979, when I accepted Jesus and was water baptized many years ago, when I was married to my wife, Lisa, which was a long journey because I did not get married and she didn't get married until we were 39 years old. So pretty much kind of said, okay, God, I guess we're not getting married here, you know? And then once I surrendered the act of marriage, like that's the check the box, I said, okay, I can, I'll be single. I can go wherever you want. Then my heart was prepared and ready as I was continuing to work on myself. And she's 39 too. So it was kind of interesting. And then we thought, well, well, we're, we're pretty old here. Probably can't have uh, children, our little faith, right? I'm like, no, we're going to believe for it. You know, Abraham and Sarah. And yes, we had some miscarriages, but God bless us with Luke and Will. They both were born in NICU, <laughs> worked, worked hard. There are definitely days of, are they going to make it or not? And we're believing for it. And now we're blessed. So we all have our hard stories, right? All of our challenges. But I, I count them. Luke is a blessing. Will is a blessing. My parents, my dad, again, I mentioned is in heaven right now, right? My, my mother, she, she's, uh, she's almost 82 years old, going through her hard right now, dementia, 
uh, forgetfulness, uh, the challenges that come with all of that. Maybe you can relate to that. Maybe I'd have you on the, the podcast to learn from you. Um, but that's a hard, right? So, but to be thankful for what God has given me through my mother and all the blessing that she has given to me through the many years as I'm 55 now. So I just go through the, the life experiences um, where I was struggling for something and then there was a, a breakthrough. Uh, it could be a financial breakthrough. It could have been a, a job opportunity. Um, I mean, we've, we've all gone through our hearts, right? Um, I don't want to go into a, a long story here because this is already kind of a, a long broadcast. I just want you to take stock in that song, Count Your Blessings, name them one by one. Write them down. Look at them like, wow, I have really been blessed. I have no need to go woe is me or talk about someone else's life over mine. Look at what God has done in my life and rejoice and, and be glad in that. So this is a shift that allows you to approach every day with a, a sense of openness, a curiosity, and an opportunity to minister to others while you get ministered to. And then now you're living your purpose and you are literally alive, ready to roll. So this is the opportunity. This was the goal of today's podcast was for you to connect at a deeper level with the Trinity, Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, as you pray. Now, I'm not telling you how and what specific words to say because I'm not God and that would be wrong. And that would be too legalistic, which is what I grew up in. And I'm done with that stuff. But I do hope that some of the words, some of the, the posturing, some of the, uh, the ideas here, tools, resources, is what this podcast is about, is, is helping you think about um, how to connect in a deep relation, relationship with, with the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And pray about it. Pray about what I'm saying. Ask him, how do you want me to pray? And listen for that small, sweet voice that will say yes or go. And for like, I don't know how to hear from God. Ask basic truth questions, all right? So one would be like, uh, God, do you love me? And just listen for what he's going to say. Because he loves you. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. So when you actually state something that is true, he's going to say, yes, I love you. Or I don't know what he's going to say. He's going to give you something, a picture, a, an image that uh, you know that that means love for you, your unique way of expressing love. So this hopefully will allow you to have a deeper conversation and relationship with him because he wants that. We were created for that. So let me, uh, let me close again in prayer. Father I, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Jesus, I thank you that you've given us authority. Holy Spirit, I thank you that we are not alone, that you are our guide, guiding and directing and leading us and encouraging us and prompting us to, to have a deeper relationship that we are not alone. We have relationship with you. So we, we choose to, to grow deeper and fall more and more in love with you because you are the creator of love. So I pray you'd bless the viewers, that you'd bless my family and bless all the families that are out there and bless everyone that's listening so they can draw closer to you and have more freedom to live out their assignment, their purpose that you've equipped them to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go live your purpose on purpose for his purpose. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like further information, go to our website at randyk.org, where our mission is simple, to share the great news of God's love.